Mighty, round two, episode two. We are so excited to have you here. We're in a, our car, so it's more casual. We stopped by Starbucks because our sweet friend Karina sponsored us. No, she didn't sponsor us. Yeah, she, she, did. she gifted us a Starbucks gift card. So shout out to Karina Peters. Oh, uh, we'll put the link down there so you guys can donate. Okay, no, but like... But not really, yeah. <laughs> but thank you, Karina. We Listen. are also on our way to the dentist because your girl is having pain. So this is kind of the only time that we actually had to film this. So here we are. Mm -hmm. We're excited to have you back. We're going to be talking about how to resolve conflict with your significant other. So without further ado, let's get into our points. We have seven points. I don't points. feel so good. Oh, yeah, so, you should disclaimer. Yeah, like she'll be doing a lot of talking and I'll be putting in my two cents here and there. Yeah, he doesn't feel too well. So, I mean, I don't feel well either. But we're good. We're chilling. I'm like running on so much medicine right now, but it's fine. The biggest and most important step to resolving a problem is. Drum roll, please. It's a clap. That's close enough. Okay. Communication. Communication. In the Greek terms, I mean, I have no idea what that means in the Greek terms. <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, communication, mm -hmm. I think everyone always hears that. Hears it from your parents, hears it from people who've been together for a long time. In a, like in a serious relationship, in a friendship, communication is key. Because that's the only way you get to know each other in mm -hmm. a sense of know what they want. And, know, and then you can tell them what you want. If you guys don't communicate, then just expect them to know and read your mind like someone would pretend to do or some guys pretend to do, then we're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. And then another thing is, silence is a relationship killer. Yep. Kills it. What's wrong? Nothing. The What's silent wrong? treatment. Nothing. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Nothing. Until you get to bed and then they want to talk about it when you're in bed, ready to go to sleep at like 10 o'clock, 10.30, and you're like, I asked you at 6 o'clock, what was wrong? He's saying this because this is a real life thing, and yeah. this has happened to us. Yeah, and I've gotten... I guess I could say I got mad at you. Because mm -hmm. it's like, no, talk to me when I ask you. Mm -hmm. So we can resolve it there. Not wait till 10.30 and stay up until 12 and wake up at 5. Yeah. No. that's not, I told her from the very beginning. When she started <laughs> doing that, I was like, no, I'm going to cut this right it's now. It's because I'm a bad communicator. Bad. And he has taught me how to be a better communicator. And so I've seen and the I've difference. And I've been a horrible listener. She's taught me how to mm -hmm. be a better listener. Mm -hmm. Listening is so important to you guys. So, But now she doesn't shut up, so she communicates all the time. <laughs> I'm like, babe, you have to listen to me. <laughs> Which is fine. I prefer that over her not talking but to me. But you guys, communication key for anything not just conflict everything everything literally. what do you want to eat literally just tell us oh my god literally just tell us communicate right, we're that not gonna us. go down that route number two when there's conflict there is some fighting and there is some disagreements and there are some things that you just are not agreeing that's, that's why there's why her conflict teeth hurt. that is not what my I'm just teeth kidding. Hurt. i don't know you that just no. woke up it's a wisdom tooth a wisdom tooth so just fight fairly there's no winning in a relationship there's always you're a team, you're one. There's no such thing as I'm gonna win and he's gonna lose or he's gonna win and I'm gonna lose or he's right and I'm wrong, I'm right and he's wrong. Like, no, we are one, we're together. If one person wins, both of us lose it. Like, learn how to fight fairly together, if that makes sense. And that goes along with communication too. And I think that goes along with being selfless. Like. Mm -hmm. Being able to forgive somebody or saying sorry first or just putting your pride aside and so coming saying, into take, an agreement. Taking the L. Go ahead, take the L. Take the L. <laughs> but no, nobody takes the L. We both are winners when, when we, we, both lose, when we, we both fight. Win. Yeah, we fight fairly we together. All right, this is a big one that I've, I think I've learned this very early, literally in life, I think. No name calling when you're angry because mm -hmm. words hurt deeper than a bruise. You know, it hurts the heart, hurts the soul, hurts the mind. And when you say things out of anger, it's worse for some reason. You know, if you call someone like, oh, you're, ha -ha, you're lame, like in a joke or whatever you guys, whatever people do nowadays. He calls it, me stinky butt. Like, <laughs> but when she's really stinky butt, it probably hurts more than yeah, when she's Yeah, we're <laughs> angry because I'm like, wow, you're being serious. <laughs> yeah, like, um, but no, seriously, like, think about what you're going to say because... That's going to stay with her forever. I would never want something for her to be like, wow, you're dumb. You really couldn't figure that out? Because then at the end of the day, they are going to hold that forever and ever. And it's going to suck for me mm -hmm. in the sense that an apology is never going to 
do justice to the way I hurt her. Yes, yeah, she will get over it. Yes, yeah, she's going to forgive me, but it's always going to be in the back of her head. Like, well, he called me dumb on time. It's, like, it's, it's not because yeah. she wants to. It's just one of those things like the devil tries to use it against you. Like, remember mm -hmm. when he called you dumb? Like, yeah, I'm going to be mad at him now. It's like, what? It's girl, an, that was like three years ago. It's relax. an internal <laughs> scar. Even yeah. though you might not see, but your words are powerful. They can scar somebody internally. And they'll be in their mind, in their hearts. And even though you can ask for forgiveness, but there's still, it still happened. Like, it's still there. So. Yeah, so I mean, if you are angry, just literally don't say it. Keep your mouth shut. You can look at her angry. Think about it like, before you say it. You can't. Just think about what you're going to say. No name calling. See, just look at be her nice. angry. But she doesn't know what she's saying. <laughs> Number four is don't go to bed angry. We've heard this a lot and it's backed up by scripture too. The, I like the way my pastor put it. It's like the bed should represent a place where there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of joy. It's like your safe haven. Peace. It's peaceful. It's restful. This is your bed, including sex. This is like the intimate part of our relationship is the bed. And that so we both share. That we both share. So if you're going to bed angry, now you're contaminating it with whatever conflict you may have had that day with whatever problems and and bitterness or whatever may have been going on like you don't want to bring that to the bed so yeah because then you're gonna think about like oh bed that mm -hmm. means she's gonna start talking that means she's gonna yeah. start discussing that means she's gonna wanna so you'd rather stay on the couch and sleep there and separate so you guys don't have to communicate okay don't which... sleep on the couch either well that's what i'm saying like people oh. people do that like they rather sleep yeah. on the couch they don't have to talk about anything because then the yeah. woman wants or the man whatever want to talk about something at 12 o'clock at night it's like no just talk to me right now let's get yeah. this over with and that's what i'm saying and if you take it to the bed now the bed like you were saying it represents not Mm -hmm. those positives but negatives yeah and that's something that we have had to learn because like he said i never like to talk until we got to the bed and i've learned how to do that better before. where i don't go like i talk to you before we go into mm -hmm. bed and try to be like in a positive mood instead of going all mm -hmm. angry to bed because it's hard and we have a sign above our bed thanks to elisa white sponsored by elisa white we love you elisa but um, yeah we do have a sign on top of our bed that says always kiss me good night and honestly, we do. We follow but that. I don't think we've ever not. Even when we've been angry, it's like I look yeah. at that thing and just want to tear it down. But yeah. Like, don't when, tell me what to do. When we first you know? started, <laughs> when we first got married, because it was very difficult for me. Um, for her. For me. Yeah. I knock out. <laughs> he falls asleep. But we still, even if we were angry, he would still be like, okay, where's my goodnight kiss? Like, oh, okay. Even if I'm angry at you, like, okay, yeah, you're right. That is our number one rule. So... Past history, that is a relationship killer. Don't bring it up. Don't ask about her ex-boyfriends. Don't ask about her his ex-girlfriends. Don't. If, if they, I personally don't like talking about my past. Susan doesn't mind. I, I don't mind because I, I think it's don't. like we've moved forward we're at a different place now but it's still like i've noticed too like if you bring it up it still makes it like uncomfortable and it mm -hmm. is awkward yeah personally i don't like it so if one of you guys doesn't like it then both of you don't like it because mm -hmm. it's going to make the other person uncomfortable mm -hmm. you guys have to both agree that hey yeah okay we'll talk about it but i see no need in looking back like yeah. if it's not uh, relevant. relevant or proactive or like the history books like martin luther king who's <laughs> stood up and did what he had to do against in that time era that's something to look back and be like wow let me look at the past but i had this many boyfriends i had this many girlfriends whatever that's not no i don't want to yeah. do that don't do that if because then that brings conflict yeah um, you don't want that so part of resolving conflict is just leave the past behind it happened it happened yeah. let's move forward don't be a plunger <laughs> i've never heard him say that by the yeah, way you have. don't bring up old i've never heard you say that stuff i guess and number six is forgiveness obviously forgiveness is so important when you're trying to resolve conflict because that is you putting your pride aside you forgetting about what happened and just allowing your person like letting go of whatever your person did the person your person your spouse your significant other your spouse there you go. Your person. Your friend. Just forgiveness in general is important for any relationship. Because at the end of the day, this is how a lot of people put it. And it's God is forgiving you daily because we are all sinners. We're two sinners coming together and we fail each other all the time. Fail God most. We fail God because we're sinners and human. And that's just the nature of what we're born into. And God still forgives us. God still pursues us and God still chooses us. And if he can do that, we can do that because the purpose of us getting married is 
to portray God and the church, mm. if that makes sense. It's like a whole circle thing. So forgiveness like is Like God shows so, us, we show God that, look, we're doing what you asked us to do. And then God goes, okay, good. Yeah, so forgiveness is so important. And you keep forgiving no matter how many times. There's no reason to be holding all these grudges against your significant other, who's supposed to be your like best friend, partner, person, your go-to, so. Last one, number seven. Hold hands, touch each other, and be intimate. You know, when she's angry, and I know she's angry, yeah. I like to go up to her and just grab her and hug her and don't let her get out even if she tries to and that just really brings down the tension like of her being angry it's like oh my mm -hmm. gosh leave me alone leave me alone no tell me what you want tell me what you need or tell me what's wrong and she's like no 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 you know um and these are things how to resolve a problem and how to avoid a problem mm -hmm. like everything we said earlier was can help to avoid a problem really mm -hmm. but if you're already in the problem i should be just suggest so you these can things. get out but these are good to avoid them and just you know every time we're out, I always hold her hand. When she, we're at the house, I literally go up to her and touch her butt. <laughs> it's fine. You know, it's we're fine. trying to be vulnerable. Yeah, we're trying to be vulnerable. Tell you what, tell you guys what we do. Like, you know, and you know, she touches my butt. I know what's up. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. But, but the that's... moral of the story is being intimate with each other and touching each other. Literally And touching. by the butt, we mean the boat, like in Finding Nemo. Okay, that, no. Yeah. So number seven is being intimate and holding hands and touching each other because mm -hmm. physical touch is so important. Girls yeah. need that a lot. Yeah. More Some than, guys do too. More than you would ever know. So that's our seven points. At the end of the day, you guys, it's loving your spouse sacrificially and selflessly. In any conflict, I know it's easier said than done, but we've experienced it. So that's why we're talking about it. And conflict is inevitable. There's always going to be some type of conflict because you put two sinners together to do life together, to agree together, to live every day together. It's bound to cause some type of conflict. And this is just some ways that you can that you can do to resolve them and to get past them. And the way our pastor said it is the closer you are to God, the easier it'll be to navigate through the problems. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean you won't have problems but it does mean that it'll be an easier sail time. through the problem. So that's our whole outlook on being close to God so that when problems do happen, we don't go to bed angry, we are able to forgive each other, and we're able to laugh with each other and be intimate. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I hope... It this was helpful for you guys yeah. and yeah thanks for watching subscribe comment down below any prayer requests we would love to pray for you guys we love you guys all in the name of jesus and yes. the link down below for starbucks we'll leave it down there <laughs> see you guys next tuesday bye. bye okay david wants to do this thing where he's gonna tell a joke at the end of every episode I think it's hilarious okay go Good time all right ready so it goes like this why couldn't the toilet paper Across the road. Oh One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Because it got stuck in a crack. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, he does this joke all the time. It's oh my, my go to gosh. joke, and it can be yours too. Uh, I give all my rights to you guys so you guys can use it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're done. Bye. Uh, Spouse selflessly. You probably tell that over. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Completely, because you botched that up. I know. Bad. Okay. At the end of the. You know what we should do? <laughs> we should always tell a joke at the end of every episode. That'd be funny. That would be hilarious. Okay, okay. we're going to do that. Hold on. Super casual. And. Casual, lots of physicalistic experience. Oh, shit.